evening. You probably have in your paper this morning read about the Supreme Court Collegium and the new controversy that has arisen. Let me take you through what has happened. On Wednesday, the President of India, Ramnath Kovind, appointed Justice Maheshwari, the Chief Justice of the Karnataka High Court, and Justice Khanna, who is the judge of the Delhi High Court, as judges to the Supreme Court. Right in the middle of the controversy that was raging over the fact that Justice Khanna, through this appointment, will bypass or supersede 32 judges, Chief Justices of High Court and judges who are senior to him. Now these two judges were chosen by the five-member Collegium of the Supreme Court. The Collegium includes the Chief Justice of India, Ranjan Gogoi, and four of the senior most judges of the top court in their meeting on the 10th of January. Almost immediately the government accepted and the President signed and these judges will be sworn in fairly soon. This Collegium had earlier met on the 12th of December and in that meeting had recommended the names of two different judges. The Chief Justice of the Rajasthan High Court, Justice Pradeep Nandrajog and the Chief Justice of the Delhi High Court, Justice Rajendra Menon. But in its January 10th meeting and in between these two meetings, one of those judges retired and was replaced. In its January 10th meeting, the Collegium went back on its December 12th decision and recommended Justice Khanna and Justice Maheshwari instead. Now, according to the resolution passed by the Collegium, it undertook, it says, extensive deliberations to have a fresh look at the matter and consider the proposals in light of additional material that has become available. No one knows what this additional material is. This has drawn criticism from the legal fraternity. The Bar Council of India, for example, has described its choice. This choice is whimsical and arbitrary. It has said the two judges from the first choice, Justice Nandrajog and Justice Menon, were of high integrity and the new decision will lead to humiliation and demoralization. Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul, who in his capacity as consulti judge, has written to the Collegium and said, Justice Nandrajog is the senior most judge among those in the zone of consideration and his superstition will send the wrong signal. The former Supreme Court Judge Justice K.S. Panika Radhakrishnan has told the media that this shows seniority has been overlooked. And retired Delhi High Court Judge Justice Kailash Gambhir has written to the President of India objecting to the Collegium's recommendation. Now, the Collegium in its resolution has stated that the choices have been made keeping in mind seniority, merit, integrity and due representation on the Supreme Court bench. But the questions that have arisen will remain about the transparency of these decisions, about whether or not the Collegium should offer reasons for its belief that Justice Khanna and Justice Maheshwari have more merit and more integrity than the others who were considered and also the clarification of what that additional material that became available was in particular. I want to remind you also there have been questions and suggestions made in the past under former Chief Justice Deepak Mishra that there should be more transparency in the functioning of the Supreme Court Collegium. Where does this all leave us and how do we understand what's going on in our selection of judges? To help us understand what's going on, I have on the show with me Vikas Singh, former ASG, Prashant Bhushan, Senior Advocate with the Supreme Court, Mr. Soli Sarabji, former Attorney General of India, Justice Salana, former high, Judge of the Bombay High Court, Sanjay Hegde, Senior Advocate with the Supreme Court, Kailash Vasdev, Senior Advocate with the Supreme Court. Gentlemen, uh, I welcome you to this conversation and I thank you for your time. Uh, my first question is going to be uh, to Mr. Soli Sarabji, if he can hear me. Mr. Sarabji, uh, the question of the, you know, uh, the controversy that has now arisen from the announcement of the Collegium, do you believe there should be more transparency in the functioning of the Supreme Court Collegium? Okay, we seem to have lost that line and we'll try to get that back. Um, Mr. Prashant Bhushan, do you believe that the, the Collegium owes the uh, Indian citizen more transparency? No, absolutely. We have been saying this for a very long time, that the whole process of the Collegium works with uh, hardly any transparency. And uh, one of the first elements of transparency is for the Collegium to disclose as to what is the basis or the criteria on which they select judges. 
uh, and secondly they must certainly disclose the reasons for selecting A over B etc. I can understand uh, the Collegium saying that certainly for the Supreme Court seniority is not the only consideration. You have to choose the best from among uh, all the available uh, candidates etc. But that does not mean that you, you can whimsically change a decision taken by an earlier collegium in December to uh, recommend to other judges and that decision is then whimsically changed by just saying that some fresh material has become available etc. You see all those five judges and the new collegium which has recommended two different judges in January, four of the judges were common. Only one judge had changed. Now, one, once those five judges in the earlier collegium had recommended two names, then those names ought to have been sent to the government. <clears throat> the fact that the Chief Justice did not send them to, to the government is really a kind of breach of trust. Uh, and the Chief Justice is then assuming the role of <clears throat> master of collegium uh, as opposed to the role of master of roster. Chief Justice only heads the collegium, but there are four other judges. Once all five of them had unanimously taken a decision in December, that should have been communicated to the government. And you can't thereafter just hold it back and thereafter one, when one judge changes, you change the decision in this arbitrary, whimsical mm -hmm. manner. Uh, this, is, uh, this is really very improper in my view. Well, uh it's the same question to the uh, to the other members of the panel as well, Mr. Kailash Vasudev. Do you also believe this is improper, uh, given the fact that in the previous uh, instance of Justice Joseph Kurian, there was the government held back his appointment for a, for a year, saying that he wasn't senior enough. In this case, seniority seems to have been bypassed. So do you agree with Mr. Prashant Bhushan today? Um, see, in the case of Justice Joseph, not Joseph Korean, Justice, Justice Joseph, there was a lot of humming and hawing all the way through. Let us see the situation of the two judges who have now been recommended. There is no doubt the Collegium has the power to make appointments. It has been given absolute power under the Advocates and Record Judgment. It has also been given absolute powers judicially under the reference of 1998. And by striking down the proposed 124A, B amendments, it has also taken upon itself the responsibility of working a system which it says it alone can work. Now, in the past few years, the appointments of judges have always been a matter of great sinecure in everybody's eyes. What is, I mean, should I say sad in this whole situation is, in December, you declared the name of two judges to be elevated to the Supreme Court. Both are sitting chief justices. Suddenly, there is a turnaround. Those two gentlemen have been taken off the radar. They are no longer going to be appointed. A third judge who was supposed to be substituting a chief justice to come here has also been taken off. Two new names have come. We are not aware as to what circumstances or what led to this change in nominations to the Supreme Court. Now, here is a bit of a situation which we must look at. Under the constitutional scheme, under Article 124, you have three eligibility criteria for people to be appointed as judges <coughs> of the Supreme Court. A judge of the High Court, it doesn't say Chief Justice, an advocate with 10 years practice, or a distinguished jurist. So the canvas on which the Constitution proceeds is very wide for the appointment of a judge to the Supreme Court. In this batch, we've had only eight advocates who have been appointed to the Supreme Court, the first being Chief Justice Sikri in 71, 70, who, who was the Chief Justice in 71, 72. Then we've had a few judges, and we have, at the moment, uh, four judges who are advocates appointed here. I'm giving you this background to understand what, the, what we feel is the trouble. The trouble is now coming because the Collegium sits, they don't seem to be any clear decisions or transparent decisions made available because you're appointing a person to one of the highest, to the highest judiciary in this country and you must be very clear as to what you want to do. If you're going to follow seniority, 
then seniority has been the criteria in the past. If you want to give up seniority, you must give good reasons as to why you want this change. You are testing integrity. What is the basis of testing integrity and arriving at it again becomes a very questionable. Is it objective? Is it subjective? Is it based on information? Um, in the present circumstances, where everything reached an imbroglio, so there were allegations that just Chief Justice Deepak Mishra were there, roster settings, pressures on all sides, judgments being in mired in controversy. I think a time has come when we should follow the pattern in England, which came about in the 2005 Reforms Act. Even judges to the Supreme Court go through a selection procedure. When they go through a selection procedure, there's a whole panel of people who look into it, including a layman. There is trust, there is faith, because earlier the House of Lords was the Supreme Court, and only the Lords were entitled to come in. Today that system has changed. In the US, a judge to be appointed as a judge of the Supreme Court has to be approved by the Senate. You saw the recent <coughs> instance of Justice Kavanaugh, who went through the cleaners. So therefore, we have no such testing system, excepting for information internally available to the judges in coming to a finding. This is where we will always have questions raised. We will always have a situation where we will be playing into an area of criticism. Have an opaque system, you will have trouble. Have a transparent system, work out the norms, settle them, you will not have difficulties in the appointment of judges. No one will ask questions. But if you go on like this, you declare names, you back off from them. And then another area which I feel a bit troubled about is a sitting judge is nominated to a particular tribunal or a post or an authority or whatever. You are entitled to do that. But is it necessary for you to make an appointment or announce the appointment when a man is a sitting judge of the court? You see, here the principle of acting without fear and favor goes away. Moment the element goes away, justice <coughs> suffers. The judicial review system suffers. So therefore, we need a lot to look into the system now. It is opening up strange situations, opening itself up to criticisms. It's opening up itself to being unnecessarily or necessarily had and troubled and the like. <coughs> we need a change, and it is time now that we looked into a chain. You cannot be the appointing and dismissing authorities alone. You have got to have a relook at the whole system. Well, let me bring in the other members of my panel. Uh, Mr. Sarabji, Mr. Soli Sarabji, if you can hear me now, do you agree with Mr. Kalash Vasudev and Mr. Bhushan that this latest recommendation or the change in recommendations from the Collegium does raise questions? Well, <clears throat> but I suppose the Collegium has a right to change its mind. It has some more material. It has material which is not before it. Then I don't see why it cannot. Of course, we assume bona fides. But if they find some new material which they had not before them, they may change their mind. I don't see anything intrinsically wrong with it. I'm not going into particular cases. As a matter of principle, I don't see intrinsically wrong into the changing their mind changing their views in light of what material they have got or non-consideration of the material which they already had. Because in the first place, let's be very clear about it. No judge of the High Court has a vested right to be promoted to the Supreme Court. Clear? He has only a right to be considered. Correct. And considered fairly. But even after consideration, Correct. and there's no charge of malafides against the collegium, if of the consideration they find that no, certain judges require to be elevated to the Supreme Court, so be it. Seniority is an important consideration, but not the sole consideration, not the sole criterion. That's what I want to emphasize. Justice Aldana, do you agree? that the Collegium uh, should be allowed to change its mind. And I just want to quote what the Collegium has said in, um, you know, in, in its note where it said that we've decided, has considered the view that the, the following persons are, the mo are more thing. deserving and suitable in all aspects other than all other Chief Justices and senior past judges of the High Court for being appointed as judges of the Supreme Court of India. Now, a couple of people have questioned, does this mean they are of more integrity and merit than the previous two names that were considered?
What's happened? Justice Saldana, can you hear me? Uh, Faye, Faye. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, but for more than 40 years, uh, I have been not only pained but anguished by the arbitrariness of this procedure. And uh, if you recall, the reason why the NJC was created was in order to come to grips with this problem. Now, if the power is going to be exercised in this <coughs> manner, I, I, I can recall that in my lawyer days in the Bombay High Court, uh, there was somebody who virtually took a long jump over the heads of four of our uh, senior most and best judges. And uh, the reason was very apparent because he commanded more influence. And he went to the Supreme Court. Now, this was not only demoralizing, but uh, uh, very rightly, they, they felt that they have been slighted, they have been insulted. And uh, all four of them took the decision that they would leave the judiciary. And I remember the bar was, we had to, we went in a delegation and virtually requested them because the system could not lo lose those four judges. I remember one of the four was Justice Lentin, one of the all-time outstanding judges of the Bombay High Court. And the <coughs> I, I don't have to give you the names of the mm. others. So, <coughs> you see, the, <coughs> the consequences are very, very important. Now, uh, let, me, let me put a counter question to you. Yes. Uh, if the December decision, as it should have been done, was implemented immediately, that uh, would, those, would those recommendations have been taken to be wrong? Now you talk of additional material. What additional material? I mean, we are told there's some additional material. Now if there's additional material, do we take it that in December, the Supreme Court, uh, the Collegium, acted on the basis of uh, uh, incomplete material? See, this, this, this whole thing, this whole thing virtually, see the law frowns on arbitrariness. And if in an important function like this, appointment of Supreme Court judges, appointment of High Court judges, if, if this is the manner in which we are proceeding, uh, I fully agree with my co-panelists that uh, the, sooner, the sooner we scrap this system or we reform it, uh, the better. But uh, until then, until then, I think we'll have to think of an interim solution. And uh, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I would like to volunteer because I have applied my mind to this. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of the, one, of, one of the suggestions, because you got to understand that the uh, collegium, both at the High Court and the Supreme Court level, that it consists of sitting judges, the Chief Justice and sitting judges. Now, I do recall years back, I won't tell you the names, uh, one of the, because of the outsider Chief Justice system, the one of the yes. chief justices, he was hardly one month uh, at that high court. And he said, I'm, I'm barely aware of the names of the judges here. And the, on what basis uh, do I take part in a serious deliberation of this type? Now, my suggestion is very simple, and there's no difficulty in implementing it immediately. Yes. Uh, we have got... We have got a whole crop of outstanding, outstanding retired judges, both at the Supreme Court and High Court level. Yes, yes. And my view of the matter is that if we could, if, if the Supreme Court and the High Court could set up two panels of hand-picked uh, uh, ex-judges judges. Judges. Yes. and request them to sift through all the material, Yes, retired judges, request them to sift through all the material mm -hmm. and uh, they are aware of the fact that they've got to work confidentially. We don't need an outside commission okay, okay. Uh, or uh, an outside uh, Justice panel. Saldana, forgive and, uh, me. For, I, I understood the suggestion, the suggestion you're making, but I do have to bring in the two panelists who haven't spoken yet and I'll come back to your suggestion. Uh, Vikas Singh is with us, former ASG. Uh, Mr. Singh, do you agree that the current right. functioning of the Collegium is worrying and the citizen of India is entitled to perhaps more information about how these choices were made? Well, I have been advocating for a very long time that the Collegium system needs to reinvent itself. 
In fact, I had written a letter to Justice Loda even before the NGAC and asked him to reinvent the system so that you bring in transparency. Now, as far as what has happened in this case, it is really very sad. I'll tell you why. When the decision was taken on the 12th of December, unfortunately, these decisions are uploaded on the Supreme Court website on the very next day. Mm. Who decided not to upload them on the Supreme Court website? Yes. Was it the decision of the CGI? Was it the decision of the collegium, entire collegium, that this should not be uploaded? Were they rethinking on that issue immediately after 12th December? Mm. Or there was a decision only of the CGI to not upload and wait for the collegium to change and then reconsider the matter? If this kind of an order is passed by the administrative authority, I'll tell you if it comes in judicial review, it will be struck down for the asking. In my view, once the collegium has met and all five have agreed on some names, then they are functus officio. The only way they can reconsider those names are if they send it to the government and the government were to send it back for reconsideration. It is only then that they can reconsider that matter. Because otherwise, there is no sanctity to the meeting of the collegium. The system itself is completely bereft of any sanctity. If a decision taken by the collegium can be upturned by waiting for the collegium to change and then putting it to the collegium again. Now, once you decide on two names, they were all in the public domain, and you claim to have some material after the collegium met. What is that material? Did you put it to these two judges that this is the material that we've got against you and we need to reconsider? Is that not natural justice? Don't you preach natural justice to the entire country? Is it not fair to at least have taken them in, the, in confidence, mm. at least by talking to them orally, that this is what we have come against you? That is, again, a very, very serious anomaly. Now, as far as the three names that have been superseded in Delhi High Court, I have nothing against either Sanjeev Khan or Justice Maheshwari. Probably they are both very fine judges. Justice Sanjeev Khan, of course, I know personally. He is a very fine judge of impeccable integrity and capability. But so are the other three senior to him. Yes. I know Justice Nandra Jog, I know Justice Geeta Mittal, I know Justice Ravindra Bhatt. All three of them are of impeccable integrity and outstanding capability. Right. Where is the question of superseding any one of yes. them? <coughs> now that you have superseded them, is it, is it supposed to be a permanent supersession or is it only temporary? Will they be considered again? Did you intend actually to appoint a Chief Justice of India straight away? by appointing Justice Khanna because you didn't want to give somebody else a, a larger tenure of Chief Justice of India. Those, if those are the reasons for appointing Justice Sanjeev mm. Khanna, then the Collegium should have the guts to write it in their note. Yes. Unfortunately, that is also that not That is not there. what happened. All right. so, so, this is so, a case yes, where... Yes, Mr. Singh, I, 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 I'll, come, I'll come back to that. Sanjay Hegde right, hasn't spoken right yet. Forgive forward. me. Uh, uh, with your permission, uh, Sanjay Hegde, so here's where we are. Mr. Soli Sarabji is saying that the collegium is allowed to change its mind. It can change its mind if it wants to. Mr. Vigas Singh very clearly is saying that the collegium should only reconsider but if the government sends the choices back and asks the collegium to reconsider. Which of the two do you agree with? Well... If the collegium has not forwarded something and it has not forwarded something in the natural course, mm. then some material comes in at the absolute last minute, then the same collegium could possibly have changed its mind if the material was put to it. Here, it was not that case. It almost looks like somebody exercised a pocket veto of having a collegium agree on something, keep the uh, 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 get everybody to sign on it and then not send it and a month later when the composition changes persuade uh, uh, four people who were party uh, to the decision earlier uh, to uh, per uh, persuade three others who were parties to the decision earlier to change their minds about what they did previously unless the material was of such a shocking nature that uh, 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 they, they were justified in changing their mind, I, do, I, I don't see what it could be. We, we are all members of the bar, we know all these gentlemen. It is extremely unlikely that there was anything that was so shocking that could persuade five uh, of the senior most judges uh, of India that the previous five senior most judges had made a horrible error. 
Uh, there, there is, no, I, to the best of my knowledge and to the best of the knowledge of all people on this panel and most uh, men of law in India, there is no such material. Then why did you change your mind? Why did you change? If you wanted to change, and was it also necessary to change your mind? It was, it was quite possible to implement the earlier resolution as well as the new, the new resolution. There are five vacancies in, on the court. They, they, these are four appointments. I don't see why you necessarily had to supersede or take away the appointment of Justices uh, Menon and Nandrajog. You have that way done injustice yes. to them. You it have not told them or anybody else the reason. And you have left a sort of black cloud over their names. That, at the very least, they are entitled to a clearing of their names. Le let me tell you, Faye, what one of the most respected Chief Justices of India once said when he had to supersede a particular judge. There was nothing particularly wrong with that judge except in the opinion of that Chief Justice that the man was prone to gossip a bit uh, uh, too much. So when the decision was made to supersede him, the Chief Justice concerned went, met the man about to be superseded, told him, look, I have to recommend the other man. I am not recommending you. He did it face to face. Therefore, yes. if ever so they, there is a contingency like that where an appointment to the highest court in the land is being taken away by other members of the judiciary, then please do it face to face with the man, not in this sealed cover, uh, sealed uh, room procedure. That's just not fair. In, in fact, I have this question to ask Mr. Prashant Bhushan, uh, and I'm going to ask this as a complete lay person, as a citizen. We know that Justice uh, Nandrajog and Justice Rajendra Menon are still functioning uh, as judges in India. If the suggestion here is that the Collegium discovered something horrible that made them change their minds, they're still judges. What is it that's so horrible while these people are sitting judges of their respective courts? And should that then worry us all? Uh, yes, you see, uh, uh, I don't believe that there could be anything horrible that uh, could have been discovered about these <laughs> judges because these judges have a long track record. And as every panelist mentioned, their track record is absolutely fine. Uh, there is no problem with either of them. Uh, and in any case, if the Collegium discovered some new material firstly, it should have been put to the earlier Collegium. You see, there were 20 days uh, uh, during which it could have been put to the original Collegium itself. Firstly, the names should have been sent straight away. But if you discovered some new material on the basis of you, which you withheld the name, that material, that means it was discovered within a day because the next day the names are supposed to be sent. Yes. And if it was discovered within a day, why was this material not put to the old Collegium itself? Mm. So that the old Collegium could, could apply its mind again and then decide. And certainly these judges should have been given an opportunity. So therefore, this brings to focus the arbitrary <coughs> manner in which this whole collegium system is functioning. I have always been saying for a very, very long time that you should not have ex officio sitting judges or sitting law minister in this business of selecting judges. Every year you need to select about 100 judges of the High Court and Supreme <coughs> Court, which means that you need to consider at least a thousand people before you select those hundred people. Now sitting judges are such busy people, there is no, uh, no way on earth that they can consider uh, 1000 people for selecting uh, hundred judges of the High Courts and the Supreme Court. And therefore, I've been, that's why nepotism, etc. and this arbitrariness takes place. Usually what happens is that members of the Collegium just rely upon each other 
to say ki well i know so and so so and so is a good judge i know so and so so and so is a good judge etc and on that basis of course they don't know so many other people who may be in the zone of consideration hmm. so that is why i have been saying that you need to have a full time body it has to be a full time body which lays down a criteria for selection and after that goes about that process in a proper rational scientific manner as is done in uk now they have a full time body of several people with a large secretariat they consider hundreds of people they consider the dossier they have made a criteria of about 15 qualities that they see in a judge here we have no criteria what what are they looking for mm. ask any member of the collegium what is the criteria <coughs> they will just say well we look at competence we look at integrity you ask them is that the only consideration why yes. not judicial okay. temperament why not their understanding and knowledge of the socio economic condition of this country so nobody uh, nobody has <coughs> ever applied his mind to laying down a criteria for selection could this be mr bhushan nobody the does this group of retired judges that justice saldana the... was uh, suggesting Yes so there should be a judicial appointments commission yes mm-hmm. it should be a full time body of retired people whether retired judges or there could be other non judges okay. also there could be uh, uh, other people who who have retired but who have the full time to devote to this important mm-hmm. exercise in yes. a fair proper rational I and have, transparent manner there should be some degree of transparency today yes. in the issue of this lokpal appointment this chief justice uh, mentioned to me ki well why don't you trust uh, senior people for uh, in the search committee for the lokpal why do you need transparency <laughs> for if for the highest uh, even including the highest people you need some transparency you just can't blindly trust people that they will do a proper job especially when you know that they don't have the time or the material to do a proper job in this so you need uh, uh, much more transparency uh, gentlemen of the panel if you want to come in on something please uh, uh, gesture to me and let me know vikas singh had a point to add mr singh go ahead please yes i want to i have a suggestion yes yeah yeah actually you know i had made this suggestion to uh, justice uh, um, uh, lodha that uh, there should be a permanent secretariat now what should that permanent secretariat be doing that permanent secretariat should be scanning all the names which according to the collegium should be considered in the zone of consideration so for instance you can say as far as supreme court is concerned you can say the top 5 judges of every court you can take them in the zone of consideration you can then give them you know how many judgments they have written what is their knowledge of law etc that whatever is coming as per as per the judgments that have been written whatever the secretariat can come forward with Chalo, then the names that they again shortlist should be given to two eminent lawyers of every court i don't agree with this retired judges principle because retired judges many times are you know completely away from reality so it should be given to two eminent lawyers who should also be selected by the collegium itself right to give their comments that these are these names which we have shortlisted what are your comments with regard to each one of them and then with all this homework only the collegium should should sit by because what is happening today i i know of a case justice ap shah was not elevated because justice kapadi had something against him i was the additional solicitor general the solicitor right. general mr golam bahanwati met justice kapadi and said that why don't you call ap shah and put it to him what you have against him I I think the system lost a very fine judge he would have been a great supreme court judge but justice kapadia was just adamant he who said I'll not talk to him also I'll not discuss the whole thing and he just didn't recommend him with the result that he retired so there has to be some kind of openness i mean you can't just have a closed system where you suddenly say i have got some material now this material is good enough why is it good enough the person is still functioning as the chief justice of a very important high court yes. delhi and, and yes. rajasthan high court and you say you material he can function i think a punitive judge is less important than a chief justice of a high court in the country today so if he can con- continue as a chief justice of a high court to say that he can't be made supreme court judge according to be is completely fallacious yes. unless there is something very seriously wrong with him so uh, i, I just i just be, want to similarly uh, they should have this kind yes. of a permanent secretariat in the high court also i just want to bring in soli sarabji to comment on what uh, vikas I, I singh can, has I said i'll tell you one more example yes. I, i'll come back to you mr singh i come back to you mr sarabji uh, uh, vikas singh one said very thing. clear one yes okay all right mr singh go ahead go ahead 
Just last thing. There have been instances, you know, for instance, when Justice Nazir was no. selected, he was a junior judge, but they wanted a Muslim judge. They could have done that. If you want today a Sikh judge, there is no Sikh judge in the country. You can look for the senior most Sikh judge in the country, appoint him. If you want to appoint a lady judge, yes. you can look for a lady judge. In that case, there is no super session. In that case, the persons yes. who are senior, you know, who are not considered for appointment, they don't, there is no heart burning because they know that they have not been selected for this limited reason because you wanted a judge of a particular community. But here, if you select a judge, you know, by superseding th three senior judges, then you completely demoralize okay. the lower okay. judiciary, which is the high courts in this country. Okay. And it sends a very yes, bad Mr. example for the entire country. Mr. Soli Sarabji, Mr. Singh made an argument earlier that said, where is the material? The, um, the collegium cannot change its mind unless the government has asked them to reconsider. And since we don't have the material, we don't have the justification for bypassing not one and two, but 32 judges and the two who were suggested earlier, there's no natural justice here. What's your response to him? But I don't, <clears throat> natural justice should assume that these rights, uh, the judgment, the judges who are not recommended for promotion had a vested right to be promoted. There's a question of natural justice. I take it that no member of the panel thinks no, no, that I'm this arrangement, this change Afternoon of mind was malabarity. Mr. Surabji, I'm sorry. The name so, was already approved once. Later? After that, to remove that name. Natural justice only for that limited Look, purpose. Look, let's not have a running argument. To please listen, please listen to I me said. and then you come to me. I want to know why do you want to say they can't change their mind for good reasons? You may say there are not good reasons. That's another point. But I don't understand this. Is it something fixed? I do understand the difficulty about this and the suggestion made about our secretariat. But it's not so easy. This collegium is not like a public sector undertaking. It's not something with the source of reasons, put them to public scrutiny. I mean, that, that, that's nowhere. They must very surely agree. But to some extent, you must trust the collegium. After all, they are judges. And no one suggests that they acted malafide. But let me tell you, it's a matter which requires, I don't want to have a definite view on it, it certainly requires consideration, but I have a little difficulty in accepting the concept of supersession. There's no supersession when a person is not uh, uh, recommended for promotion. It may be that others are more deserving. There's nothing uh, 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 detrimental to the character of the person who has not been, superseded, who not been recommended. Criteria? So these things require a solid... Okay, so if, if anyone on the panel wants to rebut the fact that no one, and Mr. Sarabji said, no one suggests that these choices had anything malified, uh, any malified intention in them. Mr. Hegre, put his hand up. Mr. Hegre, go ahead. Do you believe there was malice in the, in the change of uh, names? Hey, there, there's something called malice in fact. There's something called malice in law. If you ask the wrong question, sometimes it could aid could be some element of legal malice, but that's, let's keep malice aside. The question is that you have made recommendations for, of suitable people to the Supreme Court. Once you've made it according to your procedure, then your job has ended unless, as Vikas says, the government says, no, please take a relook. Mm. Then again, you, the question is asked to you. Now, can you ask yourself a question after you have finally signed on the judgment, uh, did I do the right thing? Is there some other material? Can you go around looking for material? I don't think so. And uh, please look at what has happened now. The uh, collegium makes a recommendation. Very shortly thereafter, they, they are appointed. And, and uh, tomorrow they are going to be sworn in. Now, are you going to tell me that tonight, if, if for instance, if somebody finds material, the collegium can again and, uh, change its mind and say, no, 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 sorry, we made a mistake? No, that's not how things work. There has to be something, 
sacrosanct about recommendations made by the collegium those recommendations are not as written water that another collegium of a future day can come around and say no 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 they got they they got their call right we will rewrite it that's not how it has to be and there may i i concede that there may be occasionally a very gross case where they have to change their mind it happened once for instance in justice dinakaran's case they, there there was some material which came about and it was brought about by the bar then there was a reconsideration that's a different thing but in this case there does not appear to have been an iota a whisper of anything particularly bad it's just that okay we did not send the recommendation to the president mm. we still have time to change our mind and here uh, justice katju on another channel said he said a few things about the collegium which uh, really make me wonder whether the collegium acts as a collective body or it defers its judgment to whoever happens to head it for the moment that is not what collegiums are for the collegium is an example of collective leadership each of them independently applies his mind and that is why if two people say no on a collegium then a name does not go through mm. now for here are you telling me that four of them change their mind about these two uh, judges totally and said no i don't think they did that either i okay all in all this particular episode has set a very unhappy precedent okay. i hope it is never repeated by and i also hope some justice is done to those who were possibly wrongly kept out mr kailash vasudev uh, first question do you agree that there was no malice at all in the change of this decision uh, second question do you agree with justice salana and mr singh that there has to be a full time appointed body that puts down criteria of how we are choosing judges why we are choosing judges you see as far as the malice aspect of it is concerned we are nobody to comment because we don't have the information available to us it is only available to the court i mean to the collegium yes but here is a question which all of us have raised you recommend two gentlemen to come up to the supreme court on the 8th of december technically you are supposed to forward the names immediately to the president because it's a unanimous decision <clears throat> under the prevailing regime which is there after the supreme court advocates and record of the judges case the decision to recommend a person has to be unanimous so there was unanimity in recommending two gentlemen to come to the supreme court both being chief justices one in rajasthan one in delhi you change your views in january after there's a change in the collegium the question which arises do you have the power of a review mm. you don't because your recommendation has gone your recommendation has been made you have not sent it for whatever reasons which is a, which is an error in my view the second aspect of it is you have by not bringing these two gentlemen yes and appointing another two in their place i won't use the word superstition You have appointed two more persons in lieu of these two gentlemen. Make good your reasons, because now everybody will wonder, because you say that you got better reports or you got more reports, you had more inputs, more information. You have cast a slur on their character. They have got a slur. They were in the first instance not not considered. I mean, not consulted for being recommended to the Supreme Court in December, and they have not been consulted for being rejected in January. you have destroyed the image of two gentlemen who are chief justices enjoying the same authority as any other judge in the country does including a supreme court judge a judge technically is a person who is supposed to discharge his duties without fear or favor these gentlemen there is no such allegation against them so therefore the question of malice in law or malice in fact comes in if we know what the information was we cannot sit in judgment because there is no pick system second aspect mr saldana suggestions a justice saldana suggestions mr vikas singh suggestion to justice lok all of us at the bar today feel that in the past few years the system of appointing judges is becoming more and more peculiar i use the word peculiar the system which should come is there should be a graded 
system in which everything should be absolutely transparent as to why you're appointing a gentleman as a judge. Because you're appointing somebody to a constitutional position to discharge duties for the judicial review of every action. In this first S.P. Gupta case Parme. of 81, one of the issues which arose was yes. how to keep the exact... Big one. Hello? One of the questions or one of the main issues was how to keep the executive out of appointment of judges, which was confirmed in the judge's case in 93. So we will be the appointing authorities, we will judge, and we will appoint. You therefore gave a go-by to an existing system by a judicial interpretation. You affirmed that in 1998 in the president's reference. Today, when the NJAC comes and saying, look, gentlemen, you require a relook at the whole system, we have backed off. Uh, look at the analogy. Mm. The highest post in the country is that of a president. Yes. The president of India is elected. He comes in through the process of hustings. His appointment yes. comes in because he has succeeded at the hustings and people have reposed their faith in him. The appointment of the cabinet is again through the hustings where you, the people repose their right. faith in the system. If a person is a person with questionable antecedents, he doesn't get elected. Yes. Here is a closed door system in which are appointing people to the third limb of our constitution under the doctrine of separation of powers. The judiciary is going to test everything. It reminds me of a book, you know, it's, it's, it's called yes, the Mr. myth Vasudev, of the imperial judiciary. It's a very uh, interesting unfortunately, book. we might have run out of in time on this conversation. Writes, I, I apologize, but no, I... I'll just close. Yes, okay. No, I'm just closing. Just give me, just give me a minute. Yes. No, no, I'm just closing. Give me a minute. In the book, The Imperial Judiciary, the author writes, the democracy is of the people, by the people, for the people. But then he says, I am the judge. Let us not come to a situation where a judge alone is entitled to test democracy. Democracy has to sustain itself. It yes. has to come into the judiciary. You can't do without it. Absolutely. That's uh, the fulcrum. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, we have completely run out of time. And I want to thank all of the panelists for making time for Mirror Now this evening and sharing with us your views on what is a very important but a rather complicated subject. Uh, I do hope that the voices of Justice Saldana and Mr. Vikas Singh and the suggestions that were offered on this panel reached the right ears. We will attempt on Mirror Now to keep bringing you panels that shared more light instead of heat. Thanks for watching.